and welcome everybody to the November recreation meeting, recreation commission meeting. Um, uh, present today is myself, uh, recreation director Ray Harp. We have commission members Yusuf Fidel, Andrew McDougall, Sanjay Arwad, and Matt Kane. Um, uh, and so we did publish, this is the middle of our really busy time uh, with CPAC, uh, with CPAC reviews. We are, uh, we are interested in giving all of the recreation uh, center proposals a chance to meet and share their proposals with the commission. Our commission is going to be asked to do, uh, asked to prioritize and present some of that information as we see it for our interest in recreation. Um, I would like to first, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, take care of the, of the uh, particulars. Uh, we, I would like to ask for our commission to again, think about the chair, to get, again, think about a chair as they are looking, as the CPAC is looking for a comment from us, or if the town is looking for our priorities for this, uh, it would be a help for them, for the town or the press to get the direct uh, impression from the commission and not have to ask me what the commission thinks. I don't, uh, I'm not going, I still will tell you that I will not force anybody to be a chair and to represent the commission's needs or interests. Uh, and I don't have a problem with sharing what I think the consensus is, but I would like to, again, just encourage people to think about offering to be a chair. You can, you can talk to me about that offline. It's not as much, it's, I think it's more a, a verbal accountability is more of a presence for the commission. So it would not have to be myself that offers the, the, uh, uh, the thoughts of my advisory board. Uh, if anybody was worried, if, if the commission is worried at all about, about my reporting on the commission's interests, then you certainly could, uh, you certainly could take that chair for yourself. I don't, there hasn't been a lot of times where I've been in that position. There haven't been a lot of places where I've had to speak uh, and, and summary for the commission. Uh, and I don't believe that I've ever said anything that, that has been at all uh, uh, controversial for, for sharing that, that impression. But if there is an interest in having commission independence from my own review, then a chair would help. The, uh, the second thing is minutes. I am going to ask that we, uh, uh, for us to be able to approve the minutes from October's meeting. Uh, that was shared, uh, the, the minutes were shared with us. Uh, have people had a chance to review the minutes from October? And Can can we uh, can we motion to approve those minutes? Make a motion to approve. Yeah. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I think Yusuf might be muted. It looks like it. Um, so then let's take a vote with the four person quorum. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. Uh, minutes have been approved for October. Uh, we didn't do this in October. I figure I would do this now and open at the beginning of the meeting for public comment. If there is anybody in the in the attendees that would like to offer public comment right now on new business or on October's minutes, uh, please feel free to raise your hand. No hands raised. Then let's get to CPAC. We have our department. I'll, I'll introduce some of the things that have sort of changed with our seasonal issues at the end after CPAC, but I do want to make sure that we have time for our presenters. 
Uh, first up, we have War Memorial Pool. Uh, I am going to pull Amy Ruzecki uh, with DPW out of the attendees group so that she can be here to present uh, uh, the, the War Memorial uh, improvement full disclosure. Full disclosure, I am, as I mentioned in October, I am also a co-author of this. Recreation has gone in with DPW to present this, uh, this proposal. It will be Amy presenting here today. Let me promote Amy to a panelist. And Amy, Amy, are you here? Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Amy Ruzecki. Nice to meet most of you guys. Um, yeah, so <laughs> which one are we starting with, Ray? Um, We're starting. The oh, there are actually two presentations, there are two proposals in. Uh, Amy, I'll let you choose which one you want to go through. Okay. I guess we'll start with the bathhouse. That's that's probably the bigger one. Um, um, and like Ray said, he's been instrumental in putting this together. So certainly chime in if I'm missing um, any important aspect of it. Um, but as we know, at War Memorial Pool, the bathhouse is in rough shape. And part of it's just due to the vintage of when it was built in the uh, 1950s. Um, and because of that, the structural integrity of this building in general is in rough shape. And so that's leading to is you know, structural issues of it. Um, it's also, um, as my guys like to tell me, it's a great um, squirrel habitat inside uh, the bathhouse, but that's probably not what you want for a bathhouse. Um, so it's just leading to, um, you know, we're struggling with the maintenance of the building in general with, you know, keeping the paint and the um, the plumbing working and, and stuff like that throughout the year to keep it in good enough shape to be able to be used. Um, but as you guys, um, you know, you guys were instrumental in putting together the preliminary design of the entire larger area. And so... Um, what what we're looking at with this project is kind of taking the first steps to replace that bathhouse, but understanding that we can't simply just replace the bathhouse because we have to do it in the context of what the additional uses will be in that area. Um, you know, people have thrown out having um, a spray park, having a new playground, you know, potentially having the basketball courts in a different place or having different playing fields in the area. And until we kind of look a little more at what those additional needs are, we're not gonna know what the needs on the bathhouse are gonna be or where we might wanna put it in the context of everything else that's gonna go there. Um, so really what this project is, is a preliminary design of the bathhouse, um, but also kind of a site design of that area to, to start to answer some of these questions so that we can move the bathhouse specifically forward, keeping it in context of everything else. Um, I think that's kind of the broad strokes, but I don't know if you want to add anything, Ray. Uh, no, I mean, I think that, I think that's fair. Uh, I think there's a lot of energy about what we can transform that space into. And this proposal basically gives us an opportunity to look into that. Yeah. I have a quick question then. Um, so this, so so when you talk about in the larger context, that's the Weston Sampson sort of redesign of the whole area. All right. So I guess is it um, is the actual pos the position of a new bathhouse is is in question as well? Like it may be relocated. And all right. Yeah. If you if you, if you look at sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, the Weston and Sampson study. If you kind of dig your teeth into it, you know, obviously it's looking at a whole huge area. I think phase two of it is a little more what I've labeled as the kind of enhanced war memorial pool area. Um, and and that's that's the area that particularly we'd be looking at. Um, but in the preliminary sketch that Weston and Sampson had, they actually rotated the bathhouse so that it was on the side of the pool rather than at the like head of the pool as it is yeah. currently. Okay. And that that's actually so that sort of gets to the crux of my question then I guess would would be if we're not sure where the position would even be is it premature to to start doing some of that design work now because i would assume that the you know the design would change windows positions things like that maximize sun and so forth is this 
is this a little early to be coming to CPAC for money now? Well, that's why we're packaging this with at least a site design. Not that everything's going to move forward right now, but we want decisions to be made so that we don't, you know, shoot ourselves in the foot with putting this in one place and not, you know, thinking about the full context, but also understanding that we can't wait for everything to be built in order for the bathhouse to be replaced because we've got a shorter time period to do it. So. Okay. And one of the, Amy mentioned in her presentation there about phase two of this larger uh, process. The timing is actually very good because the first stage is the part that, that the fundraising is really going for right now. That's sort of the, the really exciting part, which is the track and and the, the, the bigger the bigger issue there. It's town and and schools uh, uh, partnered in, in this massive vision project. This is a chance to put the, the, the study, the research into what happens on that phase two on the front burner while the energy is going in, in another direction. While while phase one is 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 part of it. This is the part that you know honestly uh, has been needed by recreation. This is the part of the of the of that high school of the of the regional area there the, the the ground over by the high school that is controlled by us there's also community field which is another stage in the development process but this is one of those processes that we've been looking at for a while and it just so happens to be the the, the first town field in that four-step process it's the first town entity in that four-step process so the research i think is timely in that uh, in that, in that it would be done at a time where where we could uh, uh, we could we could put concrete on the on the on the table for uh, in time for that second phase to to happen. Okay, so I, I may have a, that that helps both of you. So maybe putting it another way, could, would it be fair to say that this work will help dictate how the rest of the plan gets built out? So it's not a matter of here's a master plan, now put your bathhouse here. It's here's where the bathhouse should be, now plan around it. Right. That especially it, it's, yeah. No, that's a much better way to put it. Um, and it's, especially as I understand, like the Weston and Samson plan was kind of the 10,000 foot view. And so now that we want to move forward, we need to drill in on it a little bit and actually make a couple of those decisions enough to know where that bathhouse should be, not only in terms of where it should be, but also what the needs are for this. Is this only serving yeah. the bathhouse users? Is it gonna serve people that are using the fields as well? Is it gonna be year round use where it needs to be heated and insulated? You know, Some of those things we don't know and we need to have a better idea of everything around it to make those decisions. Great, thank you. For, yeah. And, uh, and I have, for feasibility, I have, a, I, have I have a couple of questions. So, um firstly like i'm trying to understand a little bit more detail what the, the the level of urgency like how much is the maintenance costing each year right now and and how is that changing over time and if we if we push this five years off what will happen and then the second question is um for this i think it's a two hundred thousand dollar proposal so what's the what do we get for that two hundred thousand dollars what? Great questions. <laughs> um, so in terms of the urgency, um, I mean, I will say that even if we start this process now, the reality is we're looking at two to three years easy for us to Definitely. go through this first phase and then get the final design and okay. then bid it out, you know, to, to be okay. realistic um, because of all the different steps that are going to be involved. Um, you know, right now, I mean, the, the reality is, and, you know, race staff can talk about this as much as my staff. We struggle to keep that building open and operational, and it takes a lot. I don't know that I have a number that I can, you know, pull out, but I know that, you know, there, there were even several times this year where we had to just shut down one side. You know, you've got the men's side and the women's side, and we have to shut down one side, and all users of the pool had to go through the other side because every single bath, you know, every single toilet was backed up on one side. 
um, for about a week during the summer, or um, you know, the the drains weren't draining properly and stuff like that. Um, so we're kind of we're fighting this constant battle, and partly it's because the roof's in rough shape, and so until unless until the roof gets fixed, we're going to keep fighting these battles um, with the infrastructure inside. So that's the urgency from my side is to, um, you know, we could either fix the roof, which is a cheaper option. We're still going to continue to have um, like gender, gender and equity access issues. There's no way we can fix that with the current building structure. Um, so we could, we could fix kind of in-house, not in-house. We could fix the roof and, right. and continue to make it work to a limited basis um, right. if we needed to, but that would be a lot of work or we're gonna continue to fight this battle. Um, so um, so hopefully that kind of answers. I wish I had numbers. Well, is, is, it, is it like a full, is it like one person's work or less than a person or more than a person? Or is there outside costs? I mean. Like on a daily basis? Um, Ray, would you know how to estimate that? I know my guys are there a lot <laughs> um, to keep the plumbing I don't going. know what a lot yeah. means. Does a lot mean once a week, once a day? I don't know. It, it I, I would guess it maybe averages once a day that we're getting called in for some sort of a, a plumbing thing. Um, okay. Or, or you know, to, to get a shower running that isn't running or, um, you know, okay. to try to try and, and ventilate would... everything because the, the ventilation uh, isn't working well either, so. I would also, I mean, I, you know, one of the things that I learned just last week about CPAC and, and uh, you know, the, uh, we were trying to stay away from the, from the focus on it as a maintenance issue because maintenance is not supposed to be a CPAC. Uh, it's like some of it is going to, is going to certainly. No, no, my question is sort of this right now, you know, CPAC has a very limited amount of budget and this yeah. year there's, there's like a lot more, like many times more requests than what we have available. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, and so go ahead, Amy. No, I was only going to say, I, I absolutely don't disagree with that, Matt, but I will say yeah. that's partly why we're in this situation now is because this pool house, yeah. much as it's needed attention for a while, it kept not bubbling to the surface of anybody's right. priority list and right you know, the I understand reason I'm talking to you now is because it is yeah um, the reason is because the reason we have so much to this year is because people are suddenly oh CPAC has money and they've neglected it for 10 years and now they all want it now but um yeah so the second question for the 200,000 what do we get so we're going to get a um, preliminary site plan. So we're going to understand the context of everything that's going around to understand what what the plan is for that space in terms of knowing that yes. so we know what the the needs. So it's just it's a site plan. Space. It's site plan and then preliminary design. So it's kind of bringing it through about fifty percent design. It's not going to give us bid documents to go out, but it's going right. to get get enough that we're going to be able to know where it is and we know you know the sizing requirements and all of that so that the the design can get finalized in a quicker yeah so it's and it's not going to be like these are the three options that's going to be halfway through the process it's going to be halfway through we have these are the three options and then at the end of this we're going to have this is what we want to do basically the the specs to design it and uh, I'm going to interrupt for one moment, and uh, Dave Zomek actually has his hand up here, so I'm going to uh, bring him into the equation, who also has some uh, understanding of the issue. Dave, are you here? Yeah, Ray. Oh, thanks. Dave? Can, are, yeah, are you able to bring my video in as well, Ray? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm gonna promote the panelists. I believe. Are you in? Maybe Dave, he has to start his video. There we go. Thanks. Dave, so your panelist now. Okay. Yeah, no, Dave. Good evening, everybody. You know, I've been listening to the conversation. Great questions, great conversation, and 
yeah, just wanted to kind of um, support, um, you know, the direction that Amy was was going and and the description she was gonna uh, that she's been giving of, of this project. And yeah, I mean, I was very much involved with and and initiated some of that that ten thousand foot look that we took at at all of our our recreational facilities with Weston and Sampson. And Amy was spot on with basically saying, you know, we had that that high level view. And then this is one component of that view, really looking at that area that includes, you know, the the ancient playground, the 1950s pool, the war memorial, and then the basketball court that really uh, isn't serving much function at all. And really, I think in terms of the product we're going to get, it's it's that it's that design of of that bathhouse. Um, and bathhouse might not even do it really. What is that pool house of 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 the 2000s look like, not what does it look like from 1950. Um, but, you know, for those of you who haven't been to that pool lately, a good reminder, and I wish we had site visits for CPAC because I think it would be eye-opening, but, you know, 1950s cinder block construction, one story cinder block construction, uh, it's grandfathered in now, it doesn't meet any of the current ADA um, uh, standards that we have today. As Amy said, there aren't separate changing rooms for, um, you know, uh, uh, different gendered uh, changing rooms. And then really we've kind of made a decision as a town that it's not worth investing in, you know, to put tens of thousands or hundreds of, you know, say a hundred thousand dollars or $150,000 into that pool house from 1950 just doesn't make sense. And it's really not, um, you know, people do talk about um, deferred maintenance. It's not really, in, in my estimation, this isn't a deferred maintenance situation. We've invested in that building to the degree we can since the 1953 or whenever, was it 1953, Amy? We've invested in that building. We've taken good yeah, care. Yeah, it's, it's an end of life. Yeah, but it's really an end of life building. Um, right. Um, so it's kind of exciting to think what could that building be like? How could it also serve uh, the, the high school as Ray mentioned earlier? Do we need external bathrooms there for when events happen at community field or, um, the fields next to the high school. So kind of an exciting project. And um, I think it'd be a, a good little visioning project, get the community involved and, and see what people want there. Do we want a new playground there? Do we want a small, um, you know, one spray, spray park, spray pad there? Do we want basketball courts? What, what does recreation want to happen around that pool? My last, my last bit from recreational programming standpoint, is also when that phase two happens, when we start looking at that space, uh, you know, I would like to know how feasible it is to do that construction. If we are moving the, the building off uh, 90 degrees to the left or what have you, if we are moving it, is it possible or how can we make it possible to do so while maintaining operations in that pool? Because that pool, of course, is a very important piece. We learned this this year with with the uh, malfunction, with a small mechanical malfunction. We know how much that pool means for us in terms of revenue, in terms of community activity, in terms of purpose. Uh, we would like to make sure that we don't all of a sudden get thrust in phase two at trying to come up with something that 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 doesn't uh, take into account our our need for operations and our need to keep operations moving smoothly. Yeah. The other piece I would just add that that I think from and Ray, you 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 just spoke to it there, but I would just add too that from a from a um, a usership standpoint, you know, the number of children that we we um, we put through camps and and take advantage of that pool, um, you know, from a social justice, environmental justice standpoint. Um, it is it is a huge low cost recreational opportunity for so many kids who don't get to, you know, go other places during the summer, and and that's a wonderful asset to have. And I think Amy's going to speak to the liner in a minute, which is another long term investment in this in this facility. Um, I will say I'd like to, as part of this, look at the war memorial. Uh, it's a very modest war memorial. We've had a lot of input through the years from veterans groups. They would very much like to have something a little more meaningful, perhaps uh, larger, um, uh, uh, referencing uh, our, our veterans from various uh, 
engagements throughout the uh, uh, wars throughout the world and uh, through history. So that's part of this effort as well. Thank you, Dave. Um, uh, if there are no other questions immediately about the the uh, pool house, the bath house redesign, then I could move Amy into the into the uh, uh, pool improvements. Yep, we moved exactly twenty feet through the building and now to the pool itself. Um, yeah, so the other project that we're moving forward is um, for the improvements to the pool itself. Um, and there's kind of three parts to this, um, to two parts that are driving, you know, part number three. Um, so the first thing is that um, the, the ADA accessible chair <laughs> um, is broken. Uh, and so we need a new ADA accessible chair um, for the pool. So that's, that's, you know, one part of it that we need to make happen. Um, another part is that uh, the drainage structure of this pool, um, we've got a couple of issues with it. Um, one is that there's a pretty good leak that keeps getting worse and worse every summer. Right now, we estimate it's uh, leaking about 2,000 gallons a day whenever the pool is full. Um, and because of that, it means that, like, I think a couple of years ago, we actually bought a cover to be able to um, winterize the pool full, which actually makes the liner last longer. But we can't do that because we're not going to continually pump water in in the winter. Um, so we're unable to actually use it that way. So, you know, we need to fix this drainage issue that we have underneath. Um, and then the other thing is there's um, there's a compliance regulation called the Virginia Graham Baker compliant or Virginia Graham ba Baker law. Um, and that's a safety feature in pools. And we do technically meet the regulation. Again, some of these things were kind of grandfathered in through what we have, but um, it's not modern compliance with that regulation in general. Um, really what you want is two different drainage structures so that heaven forbid if someone, you know, gets stuck on one drainage stru structure, um, there, there's not going to be a suction issue. You just need to have two. Right now it's we have a vacuum breaker that will technically work, but um, if something happens to that, we have no kind of fail safe on that. Um, so these these different two different drainage issues we want to take care of, and we've been kind of holding off on it until the pool needed a relining because relining the pool is a pretty expensive thing. Um, but at this point now, we're you know at the point where we need to be redoing the lining. So. We want to take care of these drainage issues and then reline once it's done because the the drainage issues we're going to have to like cut pieces of the pool structure out to do work underneath them and then do the the total relining so that's kind of the scope of this i guess that it's all over but it's all dealing with the the pool structure in general so ray do you want to add anything to that one no uh i think that that pretty much says it. Uh, anybody have any questions on that piece? You say 2,000 gallons a day? That's Lee what my guys that? tell me. Unbelievable. Um, it's, it's been getting worse. It was not that. OK. It's, it's growing in confidence over time, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, so my question it may sound like a silly one, given how hard everybody's pushing to make any of this happen. but. The pool is going to stay in this location as an outdoor pool for the foreseeable future, correct? Like this, the scope, like there's no part of this, this larger master plan that might say to move the pool or to reorient the pool or to make it indoor or anything like that, right? It's, it's, it's here for the long haul. Okay. I, I'm going to say yes, although if you look very carefully at the Weston and Samson plan, they did actually move the pool okay. about like, I don't know, half a pool's length. And I think they changed the rotation, but okay. cost wise, I don't know that that's the best use if you're yeah. not, you know, it's not moving significantly. Um, so. Okay. Okay. Um, that, that helps. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, so I guess every, 
every year we don't do this, we just have to suffer. Or you think we're at the point where the pool is at a serious risk of not being able to open if we don't do it. On the on the chair compliant, we're out of compliance on the chair that will have to be taken care of in order for us to open the pool, in order for us to uh, open the pool in any sort of compliance. We will have to find that funding someplace. The town will have to find that funding because the, the you know, that yeah that was a, only eight thousand of it though. Yeah, right. that's that's the small part of it. Yeah, I mean the bigger that part. Is, if, if say this didn't happen this year and we had to keep moving it forward, you know, I mean we're we're paying for the water. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, in order to keep that up, and then you know the pool lining as it can. As you get longer away from when it should get done, that's when you can do structural damage to the the structure itself, the underlying structure of the pool, um, and the drainage so issues. Like I said, it's it's more a safety thing. Like we're okay until somebody gets injured right. or until right. um, you know our, our health inspector does do the annual inspection on the pool. Like um, this year, and, this year the the pool didn't open on time. Is that is that am I remembering correct? That correct? Is that related to this? No, that was the pool house. No. It was that it was, was the pump. filter room. It was one of the pumps in the filter room. Didn't work. And with supply chain issues, it took from when we realized oh. to when we got it in place, it took some time. So right. No. If I could hey, just ahead. add, if I could just add, going back to something that Andrew asked about made me think, you know, for for this commission, in my mind, the, the biggest the biggest question is, you know, how committed are we as a community to having two outdoor pools open for X number of days in the summer? Um, now, what we know about global climate change is in all likelihood, we are gonna be getting more days over 90 degrees. We will probably, as we're seeing this week and this month, um, have you know, many more, perhaps a longer season uh, in the fall, um, a longer warm season, um, but some of that will be unpredictable. Um, but, but I think the big question is, do we invest in both of these pools? Now, a few years ago, um, not too long ago, I don't think anyone was, maybe Yusuf might've been on the commission then, um, you know, War Memorial was closed for a few years because it needed so much work. And we were able to get a grant from the state. I believe we put in CPAC money, but it was a couple hundred thousand dollars to get the new liner, some pump and filter improvements. We redid the deck. We put a new fence around the, uh, the 1950s original. Everything was original, right? And we did the same thing at Mill River Pool. We've invested a couple hundred thousand dollars in Mill River and we still need to. So these, you know, we just as a community need to decide, are we going to invest in these, these assets long term? Um, so to me, that's kind of the fundamental question here. Are we going to just have them limp along or are they going to be places that we're proud of? They meet all ADA, they meet all safety and health regulations, et cetera. Um, because I think DPW has been doing a good good job through the years limping limping War Memorial along. You know, that's a 1950s pool. Mill River is a 1972 pool. We um, we just redid Mill River. A lot of the systems up there, the filter and the pumps, you know, we did redid the basketball courts. We're reinvesting in these community assets. And I think people are really responding well when we do it, but it's you know, we have to make a conscious decision to say, yeah, we we need to keep these two pools for the following reasons. Well, the pools bring in revenue, right? Some revenue. Yeah. Large revenue in the summertime, yes. So it seems like it's an investment as well, if it's doable. It's yeah, I don't know. Ray, Ray would know better than I. I'm not sure they're a revenue a revenue source. I'm not sure. You know, we don't we don't do we don't do the pools. We don't keep them open to make money. Um, right. I no, I know. We, we they, invest they, in them. It was and has been in my short period of time. It has been a. I don't have numbers in front of me, but it has been a source of revenue for us. But I think arguably as much, if not more, is the sense of public service. Uh, uh, that the that the allow us to give yes in in 
hot summers and in terms of having a place, having a, having a central place. But this was more than just our department when we gave the, the free days in the, this past summer because of the heat waves. That was largely out of a, out of a conversation with town hall that said this is part of part of our relationship with town. We want to try and make this so that we have access in those days where they are. I think there's a public service piece to it that allows us to 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 transcend our our uh, revenue source and make it mean something a little bit more. So I mean, I know what I how I would answer Dave's question about about. You know, need for or interest in having two pools open, but I think he's right. We do need to be having that. Come, we need to have this as part of that conversation. I think I would add swimming lessons too. I mean, teaching kids how to swim is so critical, and um, a lot of kids get through school grade, you know, K through twelve, and don't learn how to swim. And I think it's it's a terrible thing from a from a safety standpoint and just being comfortable around water as adults that. If you you get through the system, you know, K through 12, we we should, you know, I believe we should be offering swimming lessons to anybody who who wants to take them and and uh, uh, having as many people learn how to swim as possible. So. If there are no more questions about the pools, about War Memorial Pool and the uh, CPAC proposal there, we can transition oh, sorry, easily. Ray. Go ahead, Sanjay. Yeah. Um, and uh, this may not be that short a question, <laughs> as Ray was just hoping to wrap things up. No, no, um, but I, I'm wondering, Dave and Amy, if, if you can just say a little bit about other ways in which the so we so the the pool the building is basically we're looking towards new construction, right? We've decided you've decided that that building is at the end of its life. But with regard to the pool itself, we're looking at maintenance activities at least to my understanding of what's been said, what are the other ways in which the town plans in its budgetary process to maintain the facilities that it owns? And how does the CPA funding fit into that picture? Amy, you want me to take a stab at that? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, Go ahead, I'm gonna hit mute. I will hit mute really quickly, so. Yeah, no, it's a great it's a great question, Sanjay. Um, let me see if I can take a stab at it. Um, let me start by saying I wish it was better. I wish we were more systematic about it. Um, you know, Sanjay and I have uh, and others have worked hard on trying to increase the amount of funding uh, going toward not only new recreational facilities but also the maintenance of the ones we have. Um, and I think it's, we've made a lot of progress over the last seven to 10 years, but I think we have a long way to go. And I think the short answer, Sanjay, is we, we need to look at multiple sources of funding. So, you know, this all can't be on CPAC. It all can't be on the capital uh, plan. And frankly, we honestly, um, I would say this in any, any venue in town, we also need to increase uh, operating budgets for both DPW and for um, recreation to maintain the facilities that we have. And I've been a strong advocate for that. And I think we've made a little progress, but we need to make more. We need to have budgets for the basics, for paint, for you know um, annual maintenance of roofs, fencing, uh, filter systems, all of all of the things that DPW and recreation have to take care of, those should be baked into operating budgets for DPW and for and for recreation appropriately. You know, I don't know all the division of labor there, but appropriately. And then we need to look at capital, um, you know, and make sure that there's a good balance between what we're asking CPAC for and what's in the capital plan. And I think we were doing better at that than we were 10 years ago, but we 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 need to make improvements even on where we are today. The other thing we did some years ago, uh, three or four years ago, we did, um, let me see if I get this right. We did an ADA transition plan, which was comprehensive for the entire town. So that plan looked at every building, every facility we have, and we had an outside company come in. It's available online. It's a fantastic document. But it, what it does is it assesses 
uh, the accessibility of every every building and every recreational facility we have. So the pools are, are covered there in, in great detail. What do we need to make our pools, Cherry Hill, et cetera, Mill River, et cetera, a fully ADA? So that those plans should inform the capital plan, the operating plans and, and CPA requests. I will, you know, I'm not shy in saying that I'm a huge supporter of using CPAC money for town projects. Not to say that non-town projects are not important, but my bias is we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot of projects that we, we should be doing to improve these facilities. And I, I think town projects should come first. Um, uh, and there's plenty to do. I know there's $8 million worth of requests. Um, clearly there's not $8 million to go around. There's only about 1.8 million uh, if we spend every nickel, every dime of, of this year's um, available funds. So, so I'm not shy to say I think the town projects should be prioritized, but the committee um, will decide, you know, um, using the best information they have. So I think I think we're doing all right, Sanjay, but we need to do better. I, I thank you, Dave. I feel seen. Uh, I don't know if I speak for Amy here, but <laughs> as a as a uh, department head, I feel seen by that comment and I appreciate the, uh, the words. Yeah, I, I was gonna add just two two things to that. You know, one, I'm glad that Dave's beating the drum that I say all the time in meetings. Um, I'm not, you know, I love the new spray park. I see how much people use it. I love the new park in Kendrick Park, the playground. I see how much kids use it. But every time I see those things, I see additional maintenance costs that aren't reflected in our budget. Um, and it's why like these two projects are so important to me. I think it's important that we continue to invest in what we, the infrastructure that we have rather than continue to add new stuff and then forget about it and not reinvest in it. That's not how we're gonna keep things moving. Um, and that's really what these two projects are getting at is let's take these, you know, one of the jewels that we have in our town which is War Memorial and let's make sure that we're reinvesting it so we can continue to use that into the future. Um, yeah, I think and, I think Sanjay's question and and Dave's point is that yeah. um, uh, that CPA, while it can do this, is maybe not really the the right solution necessarily in the long term. And there's always going to be a trade off. I mean, you instead of spending your budget on staff, you're going to have to spend your your budget on materials and 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 other maintenance projects. Um, or you could say increase the budget, but I mean. Yeah. Basically, you're looking at the town. The town has, well, I don't know the numbers, like $150 million budget, and CPA is one and a half million. It's one percent. Obviously, yeah. that's not going to be enough to maintain, um, to do even, you know, 20 year every 20 year maintenance projects on all of the facilities in the town. So you can't be relying on on CPA for doing that. That's going to have to come from other places, not just CPA. Yeah, and these are great conversations for you all to, you know, in your travels in town as you, you know, we have a joint capital planning committee and that's Yeah, and I don't know what their budget is, but that's yeah. also pretty over allocated. Yeah, well, that's, that's where these conversations have been happening. And for years, it's a little bit of a hot potato. Who's going to, who's going to do what, you know, it should be CPAC, it should be uh, capital. And I think we found a, a pretty decent balance. But to your point, Matt, I think, you know, these, this cannot, this CPA fund shouldn't be used for, you know, just um, maintenance or or deferred maintenance over time. Um, so Ideally. I hear you. Yeah. I was just going to add it, my second comment, and I, I may be speaking out of turn because this isn't I don't know that anything's like finalized, but I know like part of our conversation as we were talking about the bathhouse in general was um, there, there are grants out there like park grants that you can use for the building, but not necessarily the preliminary design. And so as we're talking about the first phase, we're coming to you guys this year because yeah. that's an appropriate place for the funds, but we're not necessarily looking to come back to you guys next year for the final design and construction of it, because we do know that there are other grants, um, that we would be eligible for. We just need it's it's not the appropriate venue for it at this time. 
So, so we are looking at those and I, I totally get what you're saying, Matt. I, that's a, thank you for throwing that out there. We get that. Amy, I would, I would recommend you, you bring that to the CPAC committee as part of your presentation as well, just to, okay. to let thank them you. know that. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, uh, I say we fold right over into uh, conservation. Amy, you are free to hang out if you want to. I'm going to remove you from the from the panelist list. You can you can uh, come or go as you wish. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amy. Great. Well, I will be fairly brief. Um, and yeah, just just a little little transition from that last conversation. I think staff, all of us are kind of acutely aware of the capital demands on the town, right? We have these four really large projects, um, school, library, DPW, and um, fire station. And, and how are we going to navigate our way through all of those those projects with inflationary factors, interest rates on the rise. Um, and I think right now, I know there's there's a meeting going on in, in town hall uh, with kind of a financial indicators update for the for the town council. So I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that in the media and, and on various presentations in the in the coming months. But, you know, staff is acutely aware of kind of um, what can we bite off? What can we do over the next five to 10 years that's realistic. Um, and I think to Amy's last point about the bathhouse, um, we've been very successful about uh, with getting grants. Um, you know, Kendrick Park was funded, uh, what, 80% with a state grant and not local funds. Um, we just got a grant for uh, an ADA trail at the former Hickory Ridge site. And again, 80% of that will be funded with, um, with a state uh, um, park or land grant. So we're good at getting grants. We'll continue to go out and, and seek those. So really briefly, open space. Um, so broadly uh, under the CPAC umbrella, there's open space, which includes kind of active recreation and passive recreation. And uh, uh, historically, uh, the passive recreation side has been really covered by conservation. And that's one of the, the, uh, the departments under my purview. Um, this year we came to CPAC with a $100,000 request. As most of you know, we have uh, uh, an extensive trail system in Amherst. It's about 80 miles of trails, if you can believe it. It includes places like Buffers Pond, Mount Bo Pollux, Amethyst Brook, uh, and the list goes on. And all of those trails need maintenance. All of those trails include bridges, big bridges, large bridges over the Mill River, over the Fort River, uh, over the tributaries, they include parking areas, uh, they include bog bridges, hundreds of bog bridges throughout Lawrence Swamp Conservation Area to keep people out of wetlands and also from keeping them uh, going through muddy areas of the, tra of the trail. So this year, uh, uh, back in 2012, the, CP the CPA legislation was changed to allow for uh, actually under the recreation um, uh, category, for <laughs> passive recreation uh, and improvement to trails uh, to be covered. Now, historically what happened was when you went for trail money um, uh, through the CPAC, you, you could only use that those funds on CPAC purchased properties. So the, uh, the amendment to the legislation allows you to use, if you go through the recreation uh, under the recreation heading, uh, those funds can be used on any property um, in the town of, you know, in this case, the town of Amherst. So as we look at the list of improvements or replacements that needs to happen in the town, um, these bridges, these parking areas, these access points, um, ADA trails can be covered, can be enhanced using CPAC funds. And I think if you read my proposal, you know, as you look at, you know, bridges at Amethyst Brook, bri bridges along the KC Trail, uh, crushed culverts in different places with flooding, uh, raised boardwalks at Plum Brook Conservation Area. We have four or five uh, accessible trails in town, which all need work. 
um, kiosks can be covered, you know, informational kiosks can be covered by this, this funding. Um, repairing bridging along the Robert Frost Trail in Lawrence Swamp, and the list goes on. So again, we're successful at getting grants. Um, the Kestrel Trust has been very supportive in the past of helping us. Uh, we had a $30,000 grant last year from the state to do trail work, um, but there's well, well, well over $100,000 worth of work um, to bring our trails up to the, the status that we'd like them to be. Just to give you an idea, we've done uh, a couple of projects just in the last two months um, and just two bridges uh, were probably around between the, the materials cost and the labor cost was around $25,000 for those two bridges. Um, one is along Southeast Street and one is down in South Amherst. When we can, we use town labor we have two full-time conservation um, uh, land managers, if you will, and they can do a certain number of projects. But when you get into complex projects that require complex permitting and um, uh, uh, larger bridges, for instance, that require design work and then installation over, say, the Plum Brook, the Hop Brook, the Mill River, or the uh, Amethyst Brook, those projects are probably something we're actually gonna bid out and not do in-house because it's beyond the, the capability of our staff. So that in a nutshell is um, um, the proposal. Happy to take questions. Before we take questions, I, I guess I run the problem of assuming that David doesn't need an, introdu doesn't need an introduction, but for all those here, David is assistant town manager and he is head of conservation and he knows a ton of, of the CPAC process as we're really fortunate to have him here tonight and for a lot of different reasons. Are there any questions about the conservation uh, proposal? Yeah, I guess, I guess sort of following on um, uh, is, is typically the materials and uh, any external contractors, that's not a line item that you normally have in the budget. You have to get that as a separate grant from somewhere else. Yeah, it's interesting carrying this theme forward um, that we covered with Amy under recreation. Um, our, we have what's called a grounds maintenance fund uh, for the conservation department. Okay. It is a total of $5,000 a year um, that covers Oh. That covers any materials you might need. It covers oil changes. It covers, you know, trash bags for Puffer Spond and $5,000 as you yeah, can Yeah, that's imagine. not going to go very far. It doesn't go very far. Um, just the materials alone on one bridge that we built that I mentioned a moment ago was about $5,500. Now, granted, we're in a severe inflationary environment here, so materials are, are uh, costs are through the roof. Um, I guess I would add too that the reason the the, the reason that many communities um, come at this under the conservation heading is that um, we look at at recreation. We look at conservation trails as passive recreation. People hiking, people running, people doing yoga out on our our um, you know on our conservation areas. And during the pandemic, we saw a dramatic dramatic increase of the use of the trails. I mean, I, I've been with the town almost 20 years. You know, those two years, everybody, as we all know, was trying to get outside, get fresh air, get get out of the environments that they were in with family, friends. Uh, we saw weddings that, you know, happening on conservation areas, um, you know, picnics that, in areas that we'd never seen before. Um, so it kind of um, validated uh, for us, the importance of our conservation land in Amherst. Um, so $100,000 uh, may seem like a lot, but it's really probably it's probably five or six bridge projects, some done, being done with town labor and some um, uh, farmed out to private contractors. Yeah, yeah. So, so you mentioned um, in the last few years you had a $30,000 state grant and another grant coming in for Hickory Ridge. Like over the 20 years or so, is it 
is that like the average you're getting grants like thirty thousand dollars a year from from outside of cpa from the state and so on um there's no real average i um like like is that my, typical or is that not typical um i would say that it has been increasing the more advocacy work that i've done and we've done as a town okay. i think it's increasing so i i also you know support recreation going to capital uh, we have gone to the capital uh, the jcpc the joint capital planning committee oh, okay. and asked for funds for projects like bridges, parking areas. Uh, we did a new parking. We redid the parking, uh, kind of a dual use parking area at um, uh, Stanley Street, which some of you, if any of your okay. kids or maybe you use the um, ball fields at Stanley Street, conservation uh, took on that parking area. I think that was in 21. And we redid that parking area. We, re we resurfaced it. We brought in new signage. We reoriented the parking lot. And that was probably six or eight thousand dollars. It functions both for the conservation area that is there, but also for the ball fields that are adjacent. Um, so I'm also going to, as I mentioned, to the state for as much funding as I possibly can. And then we try to get grants. So I'd, I'd say it's increasing, not decreasing. And that's primarily because of, you know, just more advocacy for the money. Any other questions for Dave? Um, I do have an, another question, but I don't know if I yeah. should keep hogging the limelight here. No, that's fine. Um, uh, so, um, so Kestrel is one volunteer group you work with. Um, I've seen in some places in the woods, like little blue um, metal things from C ACC or something. It looked like it was a, a an Amherst um, volunteer trail group from a while ago. Like these could be 20, over twenty years old, I think. But like, is so you don't know other than Kestrel? Have you worked with any volunteer groups? Yes, yes, a good question. Those signs may be very old. They may be antiques at at this point. But um, yeah, yeah, they, they might be. Um, uh, I can't picture exactly what they are, but they might be uh, boundary markers, uh, designating kind of Amherst Conservation Commission, ACC. I'm not sure. I'm uh, happy to see one if you're ever out there and take a, a digital photo and send it to me. Sure, but yeah, sure. We do, we do work with volunteer groups. We have great success working with folks, you know, uh, young people from UMass, from Amherst College, from Hampshire. Um, we also have a very active group of um, retired uh, folks in Amherst who do work along the Robert Frost Trail. Uh, David Mullins, who is a retired uh, teacher from Amherst Regional, is quite a gifted, um, experienced carpenter. And he has got a, a wonderful group of very active people along the Robert Frost Trail. Um, and, you know, as best we can, we try to take advantage of, of volunteer help. I will say that on some of the more complex bridge projects, um, you know, we, we need muscle, but in fact, we need the skill set more than we'd need muscle on some of these projects. Um, they're also often working in very sensitive areas. Um, and some of these bridges, you all are familiar with, with our, our bridges, uh, if they need replacement, oftentimes it's an equipment rental piece as well that we need to, you know, rent augers, you need to rent a mini excavator to get in a sensitive wetland area or near a stream, something like that. Um, so, so it's it's complex. Great example is the Amethyst Brook Bridge, which has been out for a couple of years. It got sheared off by an ice flow in December. We have the most of the funding together for that. And then this year we reassessed the project given inflationary factors. We looked again at the uh, design. Our building commissioner, our town engineer said, if you want that thing to last 40, 50 years, you need to take a, another look at that design. So we're doing that right now. So that'll probably, anytime your engineer and building commissioner say, take a look at the design, it's probably gonna cost more money, but um, we wanna make sure that bridge does not get sheared off by ice or water along the Amethyst Brook. Um, so we've got some of the funding together on that, but we need more funding to make it happen. 
I always saw those little signs were trail markers because we have a, some near me and then some are like square red ones. Some of them are like orange triangles. So I, I kind of follow them when I'm walking with the dog. Yeah, most of our trails are, are they have um, blazes. So red, blue, green. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what those signs are. They may be kind of have been out there for 20 years because we have, I can tell you, we have not put them up. Um, they might be along the Robert Frost. They might be along the M&M Trail. Um, yeah, those are the ones usually out yeah. here. Yeah. I did also think they were they were uh, trail markers. Um, are there other questions for Dave? Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Amy, sure. for being here before. Um, I am going to move Dave back to the to the uh, uh, attendees. Um, I know I, I would like to say there may be a little bit of a change in order here, but I, I have in attendance. Um, I have Maria and Tony from the Fort River Group. I, if they would like to share, I can I can ask them to raise their hand just to give us an update as to where they are right now. You certainly don't have to, um, uh, but as as they figure out if if that's something that would be interesting for them, I believe that Andy McDougal is going to have the us, which will put us below quorum. I don't I don't know for sure what our the start of the meeting, what have you, if if. Uh, uh, if Andy is leaving and we do have any information, I'm going to I'm going to say that if we have anything else that we do beyond that, us dropping below quorum, I'm going to ask that it just be presentations from the public uh, that want to share and that we don't discuss it right now because we are short of quorum. But I do want to respect their time if they want to, if they're interested in sharing where they are. Um, uh, and then I can table the program updates, which I think about and put a, put some time into. But I can either share them with you separately, or I can or I can uh, I, can, I can certainly reach out to share them with you all in the commission separately. And so uh, I move that we allow. Uh, there is a hand raised in the attendees. I move that we allow ten minutes for the proposal just to share where they are and then I can wrap it up after that. Yeah, is this the Crocker Farm one? Yes, the Crocker, I... Sorry, not the Crocker Farm. This is the Fort River. We heard from them before. Okay. There's been- Is some... the Crocker Farm one here? Crocker Farm is not here. Oh, okay. Um, Crocker Farm is not here. Uh, uh, unless there, if there's somebody that's here for Crocker Farm, please raise your hand for that also. That, that would be priority first. If the Crocker Farm is here, please raise your hand. Okay. So in that case, I, I, will, I will give Fort River, uh, who spoke to us in October, I will give them 10 minutes just to share where they are. Uh, we will not have discussion afterwards. I should have that motion seconded. I, mo I move that we have. Okay, I, I second it. Okay, thank you. I'm bringing to the panel Maria Kopecki and uh, Tony is here also. Hey guys. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, yeah. Hi. Hey, I, I, I don't want to take up 10 minutes of your time. Um, I'll just report uh, report in that uh, we presented to the elementary school building committee on Friday um, and uh, took questions there. Um, and they have continued, you know, as I think as we talked about last time, the site plans continue to evolve. So I do have some new maps to show you, you know, where they're at uh, at this point. I don't have, I, um, I mean, I don't have to share them now, but if you'd like, I can forward on to you what, where they, where they are uh, on the school building committee. But um, 
I, I that's really where we're at. And we have a, a presentation date at at CPAC on December first. But if, if anybody had any other questions, I don't know if the if 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 you guys have no, any. Thank, thank you. That's that's fair. Um, you certainly can send anything to me. I can share with the commission uh, information that you send to me. New maps, new new work. I was there for the last thirty minutes, forty five minutes of the meeting on Friday. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I caught a little bit of that. I might be reaching out to you specifically for for uh, anything that I may have missed, but I wasn't there. The the um, one thing that that they did mention that that uh, is new is the both the designer and the OPM spoke about um, uh, uh, saying that it would, they are going to be looking into putting the conduits and any possible plumbing, you know, so for the comfort station and for the lighting, they're going to be uh, looking at being able to do that as part of their project. So that was, that was nice to hear. Thank you, Maria. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to move you back over, Maria, just for the close. Thank you. So that brings me that we can set up our November, December commission meeting. We'll do that over uh, email. I'll be reaching out to each of you all. If there aren't enough of you all for us to really take a vote right now and find dates that work, uh, we will we'll figure out a way to to uh, uh, post and prepare for that next meeting as we can. I'll get any information that I didn't cover in here to you all directly. If there's any anything that you as commissioners would like to share with me or get on the agenda, please reach out to me uh, whenever you see fit. Questions, comments? I move to adjourn. Second. Sounds good. Uh, everybody have a nice night and uh, be safe, be well.